Going back to the old days, those times of still memory. I'm going back to the old days, the ones my mama taught to me. Don't help them out. Hey guys, look what we got here. Hey Jim, how's it going? Grab a chair, hey, sit in that chair, hey, love it. Jim Hardy, welcome to the barbershop. Yeah, How good does this me. get? This is great, Al. You can pull in and have Get have your hair cut, get yeah, the car polished. Polish. Just we, great. And we've got a couple of inspectors here. Yeah. we got Christine good. checking the car out. And, and she quietly told me this would make a nice birthday present for her. Yeah, that would. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and Herbie, as you can see, Herbie's colored blind. Yeah. But I, I, I think can see he's can, rubbing the paint off of I it. Can, yeah. I can think he actually appreciates the color blue because he has almost that color blue in his outfit. So yeah. I, he wore it appropriately for the car. But you got to yeah. tell the guys about this car. Uh, give us the rundown on it. Yeah, it's a 1968 uh, Shelby GT500 uh, four-speed car. Um, 355 rear end on it, 360 horse. Now what's particularly interesting, and the guys in the barber shop, they haven't gone over to take a look at it, but on the uh, glove box of this particular automobile is something very special. Could you tell us about that? Oh yeah, when it was uh, down in Charlotte, North Carolina, there uh, at a convention, uh, Carol Shelby was there, and of course we convinced them in autographing a few, few cars, and I had my uh, glove compartment or autographed by Carol back then. So we'll all have to go take a closer look at that. Yeah. yeah. Now the yeah. kind of horsepower this thing is pushing out, give us an idea. 360. Ooh. Basically it was rated at 360 back in 1968 there. So Sunday driving or going to the grocery store, you can, yeah, you can get there a little bit quicker than the rest of the, uh, the folk. Yeah, a lot of time my wife wants to go drive it, but uh, I'd prefer to take her to drop her off. <laughs> she can do the groceries. I'll pick her up later. Eh? I can understand that. And you can yeah. talk like that in the barbershop because this is the kind of place that we can get away That's with it. That's right. So any of you guys want to ask? Uh, well, how long you owned it, Jim, and uh, what kind of hours did you put in putting her together? Uh, I acquired the car in 1981 and uh, with a lot of hours, night times in the garage, it took me about a year uh, getting it ready to paint and uh, doing the restoration that you see on it uh, you a lot of hours her. you do show her yes and yeah. so tell mm -hmm. us about your some of your favorite victories because I know you won I definitely know you won something on this one yeah there's been a few of them uh, I had it in there uh, a couple shows there where uh, I've always seemed to come away pretty good the Boy. first prize Deserve a few it. trophies Anyways, yep. I love the color. Uh, Christine is going to do a fine job of making sure it gets a final inspection. But I think, uh, I think we ought to get your haircut done while this is all going on. That's a good idea. Huh? Okay, guys? A uh, What's a uh, brush cut worth this nowadays? <laughs> Half off. Half off? Well, I'll have a brush cut, that's for sure. So he's cut a, short. He's in for a brush cut. It's got a good look to it. So let's get ready. A little off the top, though. Huh? I'm there you go. Hey guys, we got a little surprise coming in here. I think I see off in the distance Steve Como. Hey Steve, come on in. Have a seat. What has he got here? Hey, look at this. Have a seat. Sit down and relax. What is going on here? Look at this. Would you guys take a look at this? Unbelievable. And hey, this one, beautiful color. I love that color. Could you give it to that customer over well, there? Well, you know uh, what? My it, friend it, Dave would uh, maybe like to. <laughs> it's in liberal red. It's a 1966 Rickenbacker 360. The red one goes to Dave. All right. Take a look at that one. Whoa. Now, that's yep. a Rickenbacker. That's kid. a Rickenbacker, and that's what started the rock and roll of the 60s. Absolutely. Sound of the birds and the Beatles. <laughs> and uh, then this one over here. No, this one's a Fender Stratocaster. It had a lot to do with getting the uh, hot licks out of Jimi Hendrix and everybody like that. Pretty collectible. If someone in their mind never drew a guitar for you, this is the shape that they're going to draw. No, yeah, I like the color. Sure. Well, I, I, thought I'd bring the, thought I'd bring the one in Shelby blue. <laughs> I, I think this begins to match all the cars that we've probably had in the shop here. I uh, think so. Yep, we've got lots of colors. I think we're going to show a nice black collectible Gibson Les Paul here too that I brought with me. Hey. Yep, there we are. Christine, our counter inspector girl, 
is going to pop over and give us one of the most incredible guitars. Could you it describe is. this? It is. Well, this is a special guitar, Al. Thank this, you, This Christine. is a very a collectible. Pleasure. This is a Gibson Les Paul, and it's absolutely special because they only made these in very limited numbers. This is dated back quite a few years. And this one's special because they only made limited numbers in this year. Now, where was this made, by the way? All the Gibsons are made down in, uh, originally down in Kalamazoo, Michigan. So everything we got here is all American. These are impeccable shape. Did you have to do any restoring at all, or did nope. you just get them as this? Nope. They, they're played regularly, but they're babied and looked wow. after. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. So to a collector, yep. so to a, a collector in American dollars, what are we talking here? Well, you can have collectible Rickenbackers as much as three or four thousand dollars. You can have Gibson Les Pauls as much as sixty thousand dollars if they're from the year 1959. Wow. Yeah, wow. this one's almost as old as that, so I'm not going to be able to get sixty thousand dollars for it. And if it, if it was, I'd be willing to take a straight trade on the Shelby. Here, <laughs> <laughs> here. No, no, Leo Fender is the person who started the Fender. Okay. Fender Musical Instrument Company is uh, Freddie Fender, and Leo Fender, or Fre Freddie is a poor excuse for Leo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to let you know, our, our house band. Yep. Well, those, no, no, Al, those are my roadies. These are the roadies. These are my roadies. Maybe they can bring and, me and over if they another. they can bring over a couple of other Bring me another collectible each. piece we've got here. Yeah. Hey, guys, what a treat, eh? That is something. This one's a little okay. bit, this one's a little bit different. This one's, uh, actually from the Gretsch Guitar Manufacturing Company. It's, it's an American manufacturer as well, and it started off our rockabilly era. People Ooh. like Dwayne Eddy and Chet Atkins, we all equate those names with, uh, with the Gretsch Guitar Company. This one's about a 1962, has a value of around $2,500. There's a fellow without a guitar, you can take there that one go. there. Hey, look. And for all you country people. He is so humble to bring this in. Thanks, Rudy. You didn't have your white gloves on. That's all right. Everybody is, equates the Fender Telecaster with real solid country music. So when you hear all the heavy, heavy country licks put out by lead guitar, it's always been done with a Fender Telecaster. So this one dates back to about the mid-1960s. So it's a nice collectible piece. Here, Al, we're going to give you one. Hey, thank you, you so much. Still have more to give away? Oh, look at that. And I'll keep the last one. Now, this, can I try, try a couple of licks on yeah, this? Yeah, you go ahead, Al. Okay just you go, go ahead, ahead Al. We'll turn the sound off for a while. If we have. <laughs> <laughs> Very important that these aren't plugged in today. Yeah. 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 This guitar here is uh, an early 60s Gibson. It's a, a, a guitar that we equate the sound of many famous jazz players with. The big, the big box and the solid spruce woods make this a very, very nicely handcrafted instrument, as you can see from the, the swelled belly on the back and the swelled top. Fine well, electronics. If I'm not mistaken, we got a heck of a barbershop band going here, haven't we? I think we do, Al. I'll yep. tell you. We can play something. I'll do like rhythm. You okay. Let's okay. plug them in, though. Sure. Everybody ready on the count of three. Okay. Play a G. <laughs> I'll play a G. I think what would be best is we play the skeleton key, and that way it'll fit everything. How's that? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So that was a part of my vintage guitar collection that I thought I'd bring in today. And then there's some guitars that certainly won't leave my house because of their value. But these are nice uh, barbershop guitars that I would like to bring into house place once in a while. Hey, now that you uh -huh. went to all this effort, we should at least give you a haircut or a mustache trim. Uh, how about it? No, I always feel safe wearing a hat to house place. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rock and rolling cars, Al. Rock and rolling cars. Rock and rolling cars. Rock and rolling cars. cars. There you go. I like that. <laughs> We're going to see if we can talk him into a quick haircut anyways. Take some of the grays. We'll try it. Okay. We'll try it. All right. Thanks, Al. Okay, guys. <laughs>